Today's brew talk is about the stages of fermentation and brewing. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Steading Brews. Let's just get right into it, shall we? We have some audience questions and comments here that help support this topic and this is why we're doing this topic in the first place. Tony Mason said, my first experience with home brewing was when I started a mead and he said that with quotes, it's still mead. Honey, water, raisins, and yeast based off another channel. Ooh, another channel. Unfortunately, all they had was the beginning steps and no information on racking, secondary fermentation, degassing, etc. I racked it after a few weeks, put a cap on the jug, and it exploded a month or so later. Sadly, we've heard this a lot, and it's because not everyone is explaining everything really well. That's why you should only watch our channel. <laughs> Just saying. Um, I'm joking, of course. Eric Pope, I have two gallons of mead in secondary fermentation. Can I remove the airlock and put the cap back on? Or would I accidentally make a bomb? Airlock hasn't moved for over a week, if that helps. Bass L. I'm making my very first mead right now. I'm about four weeks in and it's still bubbling away very slowly. I was really confused about racking. I kind of understood that it, its purpose is to get the mead off the sediment, but the term secondary fermentation was really throwing me off. We're hearing these kind of questions all the time. Patriot's Edge Rustic Wood American Flags. Possibly the longest and most interesting um, login I've ever seen on YouTube. Anyway, question. After secondary termination has completely stopped, is it safe to continue to age it in bulk or in individual 750 mil bottles? I guess my main question is, if fermentation has stopped, does it need an airlock for two, four, six months or whatever amount of time we decide to age it? Why not just put an airtight lid on it and stick it in a closet and forget about it for a year until you're ready to bottle it? Okay. Let's talk about some of this now. There are distinct stages of brewing and fermentation. Now there's some sub stages too, and we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna to try to not make this a 45 minute video, if at all possible. The stages of brewing. Derica, what's the first stage of brewing? The first stage of brewing gets <laughs> overlooked tons, and we mentioned almost- Even I overlooked it when I was putting the list together. <laughs> yeah, but we mentioned it in almost every single video, and that's research. Before you even start brewing, you wanna know what it is you're brewing. I know that sounds yeah, silly. What do you plan to make? But it's important, particularly if you follow the natural brewing method like yes, we do. It requires more planning. So, first of all, what are you making? Are you making a mead? If you are, you need to know that your fermentation sugar should be at least 50% honey. Are you making a wine? If so, then the sugars that you're using to ferment could be fruit, could be sugar, could be a multitude of things, could be a combination of things. It's okay when you're making a wine. Are you making a beer? You're going to use grains for your fermentation sugars. See, all these things need to be figured out. Ahead or you could of time. use liquid malt extract or dry malt extract too. We prefer to use actual starches from actual grains, but your mileage may vary. Yes, from there, you need to figure out, okay, now I know what brew I'm making, how do I want my brew to end up? Do you want it to be sweet? Do you want it to be dry? That's going to determine what kind of yeast you use and your sugar ratio. Then you need to think about your yeast that you're gonna use. Do you want a high ABV? Do you want a moderate ABV? Do you want a low ABV? That's how much alcohol is in your final brew. That is gonna help you determine your yeast selection as well, also, are you using fruit? You might want fruity esters. Are you doing a beer? You might want a bear-based yeast. So, after you've answered all those- She doesn't have the notes, I do. All after, right. After you've answered all these questions, you now have a good idea of what yeast to select, and then you know how much sugars you're going to need to make that yeast happy. You don't want too many, or the, the fermentation is gonna stall, and you don't want too little, because then you won't reach the sweetness level that you've already decided you wanna get. Ta-da! See, that's why research is so important and should be your first step. So that was Derek's rant for the day. <laughs> that was awesome, by the way. Thank I you. should record that Thank and you. make a separate Thank video you. just Thank for you. that. Thank you. Thank um, you. Mine is going to sound very bland in comparison <laughs> now. The second step is primary fermentation. And that is when you assemble everything. You put it all together. You take all the information that you gathered in your researching and you put those ingredients into a fermenter under airlock, preferably, with a lid, the whole thing, you take your initial gravity reading at this stage, and then you put it away. You wait. Yeah. Now, during primary, you can give it a swirl, give it a little shake. I don't recommend taking the airlocks out or taking lids off, unless it's absolutely necessary. But a good swirl, you know, once a day, twice a day, lets it help degas a little bit, keeps things moving, lets 
lets everything get to everything in there so that it can do its job. It can be extra important to do that little swirl thing if you have solids in there. Oh, you yeah. want to make sure those solids make sure they stay, stay moist. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, another part of primary fermentation is also a rough rack. Now we've made that word up. I don't think anybody else actually calls it that. A lot of people will say it's the removal of like if you have a bag of fruit or any fruit that happens to be in there. We call that a rough rack because I don't actually want to rack it off the lease because if I rack it off the lease, I'm basically getting rid of the yeast colony. So fermentation is going to be close to done, but it's not really finished. It's just not going to work anymore. Bad things. We won't get into that. We talk about that in other videos. The next step is actually racking to secondary. Now, I just want to go on record right now and say racking means to move liquid from one vessel to another. Generally speaking, you're removing lease and solids. People ask all the time, can I just use a filter and all this? Okay, let's not reinvent the wheel. We've been siphoning for years and years and years because it works, it's efficient, and it just it does the job as well as we can expect with the least amount of waste, okay? But there are two very confusing things here when it comes to racking. Yeah. Number one is the words secondary fermentation. It's not secondary fermentation. I don't know why they call it that. It confuses it's me just too. just the way it came up. Once you get to this secondary fermentation stage, you should be done fermenting. So it's really not secondary yeah, fermentation. Secondary fermentation is after you've racked it from primary into another vessel, you put it back under airlock and it sits for a period of time. Could be weeks, could be months, depends on your taste. This stage really should be clarifying and settling. Clarifying, whatever, yes. It's aging and settling is really what it is. At this time, you've removed most of the yeast. There's still a little bit of particulate in, in solution. So it's helping to settle that out, but fermentation should be done, okay? There might be a minute amount still going on, but it really shouldn't be. You should, it should be finished at this point. It really just helps to clear that brew out. The second confusing thing to me is racking and when we talk about racking we talk about removing the sediment when really we're not removing the sediment we're, we're removing, removing the, the juice from the sediment so yeah. <laughs> yeah now a lot of people ask why do you have to remove it from the lease well here's the thing the lease is drinkable okay it's not going to harm you it might give you a little bit of gas and make you a little upset stomach but it's not going to hurt you okay you can actually reuse it if you want to and we're going to do that in an upcoming video but you remove it so that it can help it clear okay you're not stopping that fermentation it should already be done you're just removing that stuff so it doesn't cloud up your brew when you try to move it or anything like that there's also a very minute amount of off flavors that can occur with extended contacts yeah. we're talking weeks. many months yes. not a couple of weeks right. so there's no rush to rack okay we we should make a t-shirt there's no rush to rack <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, secondary... There are so many t-shirt ideas oh, yeah. that just don't translate to women yeah. very well. Ooh, I didn't even <laughs> think of that. Okay, um, we'll just move on. <laughs> secondary can also be used for bulk aging. Now what that means is you're not only letting it settle and clear, which takes a few weeks to a few months, you are actually aging that brew. Still leave it under airlock just in case there's no harm. It also is a way to naturally degas. Now we do this. I used to actually do the stirring thing and degas, and I, I stopped doing that. Instead, in secondary, I let it clarify and degas naturally. We found that to be a much more effective way to do it. Sure, it takes longer, but age and time are your friends. We're proving this time and time again. We're starting to do tastings on Tuesdays where we pull out a brew that we haven't touched in over a year and finding out, oh wow. boy, this is good that we didn't like it when we first yep. had it. We We're just kind of stuck it on the shelf. We're two for two so far, yeah. so. Two for two. Um, there's also, after secondary, a suggested second racking. Now, that second racking can be done a month in, a couple weeks in, many months in, whenever you want, or just before you're about to bottle. I tend to do this. We call it the two rack rule. We have your first rack into secondary, and then just before you bottle, I'll put it into a pitcher and use that pitcher to bottle. That way I'm getting it off that little bit of sediment that's left again into a pitcher that doesn't have any sediment. I can go right to the bottom of the pitcher, no worries. Just makes for nice tidy cleanup and less sediment in your bottles at the end. Then we have aging. Why do we age things at all? Somebody actually said, this is homemade wine. Why are you aging it? I was confused by that question and even talking with them a little bit more, I don't think they fully understood what I was saying other than most of the time when they've had homemade wine, it was drank very quickly and very young, which 
our sweet red. I agree fully. I actually prefer it right out of the main fermenter before secondary than a couple months later. It just changes the wine a little bit. I think it's a malolactic fermentation, but that's a whole other story. But why do we age? Well, for one thing, it helps meld flavors together. So disparate uh, flavors come together better. It rounds off the edges, like a lot of the esters that we don't really like, flavors that we didn't really intend, can sometimes be mellowed. Um, it also, any unusual flavors that come from like some of the wood alcohols and things like that that are in any brew, not just home brew, they're in commercial brews too. Um, very, very minute amounts, but they can affect your flavors. So we don't want that. And ethyl alcohol will meld and mellow over time, and it makes things just taste a whole lot better. Fruit flavors tend to come back, like in, in meads. The honey will often be gone right away when you first make it, but months, months later, the, the honey flavors yep. start to come back. Um, what else does aging do? We've, we've had many that... It just makes things better. <laughs> That's <laughs> all I can really say about it. Anything else you'd like if you think about it in terms of cooking, if you make a sauce or even some like lasagna, lasagna. or something that has different layers. Soups, stews, right. chili. If you notice the next day, it always tastes just that little bit better. That's because it those... Aged. <laughs> it aged. And those, those layers, those different elements have blended and created a, an even better more tasty, more co cohesive flavor profile. And that's what happens in aging for your brews. So that's the basic stages of brewing. If you have questions about this or you don't understand something, please ask in the comments below. Find us on Facebook. We answer questions all over the place. But that's all we got for today. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.